For those considering a Toyota Camry, some revealing news. There's another five-passenger sedan with front-wheel drive, fuel-injected engine, roomier trunk, and it's $1,200 less than the Toyota Camry. In fact, this German-engineered 1990 Volkswagen Jetta GL, including its new features, costs less than last year. Welcome back to that track channel. Today we're out here at Rad Torque Raceway in Edmonton, Alberta, Canada for the kickoff of Miles of Mayhem. And we have stumbled across quite possibly the craziest Volkswagen Jetta I have ever seen in my life. It's right here and we're gonna check it out right now. Well guys, we are here with none other than Mr. Nick Duval from Duval Builds out of Brandon, Manitoba, Canada. Nick, how are you doing today? Good, and yourself? Oh, no complaints. I'm actually pretty happy now that I found this thing. This thing's wild. You guys don't know this at home yet, but we're about to find out right away. This car is not your everyday Jetta. This is a Volkswagen Jetta that just so happens to have a twin turbo LS swap in it. And obviously rear wheel drive converted along with a bunch of other goodies. Nick, can we take a look under the hood here and check it out? Sure, definitely. Perfect. Okay, Nick, take me through this car. What's going on here? This looks like a pretty wild setup. Yeah, so it's a LM453 aluminum block. It's got Gen 4 internals. It's got a Summit Stage 5.5 cam, and then it's got all the Holly goodies on it to make, make some power, and it's got two 6878 turbo strapped to it. Okay, so yeah, like, I mean, beautiful work too. Like, I love the, the actual texture and stuff of your the Holly intake and your valve covers and that. Did you do that all yourself too or no? Actually, uh, my friends down at home at Ion Coating did all the powder coating on it. Oh, this. Leland, with the, he's got that crazy STI. Yeah, that's he's got right. that 2J. Yeah, that's right, awesome. So you did all that work. Yes, sir. Crazy, so out of curiosity, what kind of power is this car making? Uh, on a good day, it's probably right around that 750-800 range. 750-800, okay. And is there potential for more? Is that a max number? I've, I've pushed it a little bit, but I like kind of where the range is right now. I just want to figure out how to get it to leave good and really get that number down. Of course. So now, what year is this car? This Jetta is a 1990 Wolfsburg Jetta. Okay, and how long have you had it? I've had it for three and a half years now. Okay, and I'm assuming you didn't buy it like this. <laughs> no, so my <laughs> girlfriend actually, um, her parents bought this back in 91. Okay. And so it's been in her family longer than she's been in it, and it's been parked in a field for <laughs> last for the seven years before I bought it. Right. So it kind of pulled it out, had a 1.6 turbo diesel in it, and I was pretty bored of 64 horsepower, so this was, was, this was the solution. Funny story for you. This type of Jetta, a turbo diesel Jetta, was the first <laughs> car I ever learned to drive manual transmission with, actually, whenever oh, I was 16 sweet. years old. So I saw this car, I was like, oh, that's so cool. So I had to come check it out. And then, of course, obviously a big surprise here. So yeah, no, it's a lot of fun. Pretty wild. Now, would this have been an original five-speed manual car or was it yeah, auto? It was yeah. an original five-speed manual car. Okay, very similar then to what I drove. <laughs> Probably the exact same. Awesome. So I'm assuming it's no longer five-speed manual, though. What trans no, is in here now? It's got a built 4L80 and it. it's rocking an Extreme Automatics manual valve body with trans and it's got a Circle D Pro Billet uh, triple disc lockup converter. Awesome. So now to correct me if I'm wrong here, but with a manual valve body, you still got to knock the gears. One, two, three, four, or yes, do you just leave it in a gear for the whole run? No, you got to shift one, two, three, four. Okay, awesome. So it's no automatic-ish. The only difference between this and a stick is uh, you don't have to do the H pattern, you don't have a clutch. Right. Now, are you normally an eighth mile racer, a quarter mile racer, or do you do a dabble in a bit of both? Bit of both. Okay. It's kind of, it's the daily driver in the summertime, so why not? dabbling as much as I can. Of course, of course. Well, we look forward to following your journey this whole week, but we still actually have to check out a lot more of this car because a car of this caliber, I'm assuming has some safety equipment that comes with it and stuff oh, like yeah, that. So I'd love sure. to check out the interior of this car. And you know what, let's check out the whole thing while we're here. So yeah, show me the interior. Yeah. 
Okay, Nick, this looks pretty crazy in here. Do some talking for me. Tell me what's going on in the interior of this car. So uh, to, uh, as we talked about with the 4 lady being manual of the body, you have a, the shifter you need. So every gear you have to shift it through. Okay. So that's a Motion Raceworks 4 lady shifter. And this has race clip racing seat, or yeah, race clip harnesses, Kirky seats, and it's got a full cage in it. And it has a steering column out of an Equinox. So I have electric power steering, a Holly Pro Dash, a Switch Pro switch panel, and it has an AM V3 water math kit in it. Very, very nice. All the good, all the all the important bits for going fast all are located stuff. in this car. Yeah, all the fun stuff. Including these dice. <laughs> yeah, you gotta have the fuzzy dice if you have a 90s Jetta. Yeah, of course. Okay, let's take a look at the back of this thing. Okay, Nick, let's check out the back of this car. I'm assuming uh, you're running a mixture of pump, meth, something like that. Yeah, so it just runs pump on the street. I usually run 87 octane for highway drives just to help with uh, the bill a little bit. And it's got a, the water meth kit in the back here. So at about six pounds of boost, it starts injecting. And it's got the fuel cell in the back and it's got a rear mounted catch can. Okay. And it's got a push pull disconnect and a two inch uh, trailer hitch so I can haul my trailer. Awesome. Now, what about tires on this car? What do you run for this thing out back? Uh, so for the street, there are 315, 35 Nitto NT Triple R or Triple Five R's. Yeah. And they're a pretty good street tire. It just it gets a lot of heads because it's just a super wide tire being in the back of a Jetta. Of course. And yeah, yeah. so you got some Willwood brakes back there too. Yeah. And so what about what about suspension on this car? So yeah, the brakes it's Willwood Dynalite Pro calipers and two-piece rotors front back. And for the rear suspension, it's a full four-link suspension I made myself. And it's got a 488 with a fully built div with a 44 spline strange spool and a 430 gear. And the front suspension's out of a 1990 Camaro that I kind of adapted to a Jetta. Awesome. Okay, well, we got a long week in front of us. We're at Miles of Mayhem here in Canada, Canada's biggest drag and drive event. And uh, we're just day one here at Rad Torque Raceway in Edmonton. So uh, we go, we're gonna watch you do some passes and then obviously load up, hit the road, and uh, we're off to Saskatoon, a 500 kilometer drive from here. Yeah, it's a long hump. So Nick, good luck today. I'm gonna watch you do some hopefully good passes and uh, yeah, we'll follow your story for the week, man. Thanks, man. Okay, thank you. Gotta be pretty happy with that. All right, next, next second pass. Let's see how this one goes. So Nick gets a couple passes in at Rad Torque Raceway and decides to load up with his friend Kyle and they hit the road making it to their next destination which is going to be Saskatoon, Saskatchewan. But before they get there there's a couple check stops along the way. One at JV's Power Center in Edmonton, Alberta and another one at a museum in North Battleford. Now this is the longest day for driving and that's why these guys are only doing a couple passes here because they have 525 kilometers to their next stop which is about 325 miles for our American listeners. Now these guys wanted to hit the road early so they could get a good night's sleep. It's probably a good thing they did because they weren't ready for what was about to happen tomorrow. All right guys, we got Manitoba LSX pulling up here for a little friendly battle. We have a Turbo LS Camaro on the, my left side here, which is uh, uh, James Dick uh, in the green Camaro. And then we got Nick Duvall with his Volkswagen Jetta twin turbo LS powered car. Let's see how this goes down. Now, do you remember when I said they weren't ready for what was going to happen tomorrow? Well, tomorrow is here, and Nick's friend Kyle just managed to disintegrate his engine on his first pass of the day. 
So these boys actually had to locate a six liter motor to put back into Kyle's Datsun truck and do the whole swap while they had daylight on their side. Unfortunately, this took up the whole day, meaning Nick didn't get another pass, but he was there to help out his best buddy, Kyle. Next first pass here at Medicine Hat. Let's see how this goes. Seven twelve, hundred three mile an hour. Well, Nick, first pass here at Medicine Hat. Take me through it. What are your thoughts? So it was actually a, a fairly disappointing that pass. I hit the boost safety three times, so I hit twenty two pounds of boost three times down the track. So and then I just let out shortly before the eighth, but it still did a pretty decent time. It was seven one three at one hundred and one or one hundred two mile an hour. So it's a pretty slow mile an hour, but I turned the boost down. And it should pick up. Okay, so are we doing an attempted pass number two here at Medicine Hat? Oh, yeah, for sure, man. Awesome. Okay, well, let's go get it. Sounds good. Woo! Let's go, Nick. Pass number two here at Medicine Hat for Nick Duval. Coming right up. Wow, is that windy? <laughs> Seven forty two, ninety three miles. Well, the car's sitting on jack stands, and obviously that means we're happy with run number three, You're about to hit the road. Talk to me about run number three. Run number three was really good. Got a lot of good data in that one. I uh, ended up, um, I heard a pop or something. I think I may have hit the rev limiter. So I went a touch slower, I just let off, but it rolled to uh, 740 at 92 miles an hour. So it, it was moving really good. I just let off just to be safe and we're packing up and ready to go. <laughs> no go! Well, Nick, day four of five is finally here. We're in Rimby, Alberta, and it's been a hectic week. How are you feeling and how's your trip been so far? It's been a really nice trip actually. Yesterday's drive went pretty well. We were able to see a couple things, take a nice scenic route, it was quite lovely and gonna try hopefully a couple things because I don't have the bump figured out so I gotta try and build boost right away on the trans brake. So trying out something in the advanced table to hopefully bring that up and maybe get a six. Absolutely, well I'm cheering you on. And now, have you guys checked out DA here yet or no? No, I haven't yet. Okay. We well, just got here and we're just switching stuff over. Well, hopefully it's uh, hopefully it's decent. I mean, like we're in boosted weather today, so yeah. hopefully uh, hopefully we get some passes in before the, they're calling for rain. Yeah. Let's hope it stays away. I hope not. Okay, we'll catch up with you in a bit. Thank Thanks. you. Here we go guys, pass number one for Nick Duval to Jetta and Kyle with the Pizza Planet Dats. And now Kyle had unfortunate luck, sent six rods through the block in Saskatchewan, replaced the 5.3 with a six liter and he's ready to rock and roll. Currently sitting in third spot for Pro Street class in that 580 class, let's see how it goes. Nice. And 
Nick Duvall, the 690, he's got to be happy with that. Well, Nick, first pass is completed here at Rimby, and I have a feeling you have some positive words for me. I am very happy. So we got a 690 out of it at 108 mile an hour. So it's slower than my fastest mile an hour, but it's my fastest time, and it broke up near the end. So we're thinking we're moving the stock 5.3 truck spark plug gap and going to an actual proper gap is going to fix the problem and hopefully go a bit quicker. Absolutely. So your opinion on the track so far that you've raced, is going to be one of your faves so far? I like this one a lot, actually. It's just the situation's nice and it's not super windy because there's berms on either side. Of course. So I like it and cool. not getting burnt. We have cool weather. Everything's kind of playing in your favor today. So are yeah. you making any more passes? Oh yeah, going for another. There we go. Okay. Good luck. Have fun. Thanks, Gary. guys, Nick's up for another pass here at Rimby. His first pass went really well. He touched into uh, the sixes, went 690, and he's over the moon. So they changed the plugs on this car, and uh, he's just trying to give it all he can and hope for another six. Seven one zero at 111 mile an hour. All right, guys, Nick is coming back up. Nick's back up, another pass, let's go. Woo! Here we go. He wants back into the sixes. to 111 mile an hour. Well, Nick, you told me at the start of the week you wanted a six and you got your six. So obviously we're here in Rimby, Alberta. You've got your three passes in. It looks like you're packing up, getting ready for Edmonton. Talk to me about your experience here in Rimby today. So it was pretty good. Uh, at the beginning of the day, the air was great. Track was nice. I uh, did a couple computer beep boops last night at the hotel room, flashed her in and it made four, four and a half, five pounds boost on the leave. Got a 690 at 108 miles an hour. It broke up a little bit at the end, but we found the problem. I needed to change the plugs to a colder plug and gap them properly. And now it's miling an hour, like 112 miles an hour is the last pass, but did a seven flat. It's spinning off the line now. Absolutely. So hopefully for tomorrow, you guys can find that just perfect sweet spot to keep the mile an hour and keep this car getting out of the hole fast. Exactly. Okay, well, good luck. We'll see you in Edmonton tomorrow. Thanks, Gary. So Nick, day five is finally here. The mayhem is coming to an end and the Jetta has been pretty much problem free. Yeah. You want to talk to me about uh, your trip and uh, let's talk about today. What's the plans for today? Are you doing anything different with the car today or just running it the way it is? Uh, we'll see what the day brings. Probably turn it up a little bit since we're back where the tow vehicles are. May as well have some fun with it on the last day. Awesome. Well, we had sixes yesterday in Rimby, so maybe we can just get that low six. Yeah, let's see what we can do. See how it goes. Thanks, man. It's got to be happy with that. 